So what I decided to do to kill some of the time, which I have a lot of nowadays, is I decided to recreate the New Mexico State men's basketball team on NBA 2K20. I made them an expansion team for a new NBA season. And when I say that I recreated them, I mean I recreated this team from their jerseys to the Pan American Center to the players to make their faces actually look like them. Everything that you can imagine, guys, this is as accurate as I could make it. And really, this is kind of off my time. I'm not really on the clock for this. It's just something that I want to do for fun. And I'm going to be simulating one game of this 30-game season every night for the next month and then possibly the playoffs, which is also going to be single elimination. And the goal essentially was to have it replicate an NCAA season. So the quarters are also going to be 10 minutes. So that way it's a 40-minute game instead of the normal 48 that you would see in the NBA. Now, I did put out an article about this whole process, which took me about 10 hours, guys. So make sure to check that out on the Las Cruces Sun News site. That is lcsun-news.com. That goes into everything from the jersey creating to the contract negotiations, pretty much everything you can think of. So make sure to check that out. But I am going to give you all a brief run through of this team so you guys can see what we are working with as of right now. So let's go ahead and start off with the uniform design. Our first one is the classic home white jersey that you see with New Mexico State. Uh, really the only difference here is that that Aggies text is supposed to be a little bit thicker, kind of like what you see right here on my shirt, just a little bit thicker, um, but they actually don't have a cursive font on this game. So I had to actually create a cursive font on my phone, make it a transparent image, and then upload it onto here. So that's as good as I could get for that. And then the collar, it's supposed to be crimson. And then once it, when it gets down to here, it's supposed to be white. It has to be one full solid color in 2K, and I think this crimson looks the best. Uh, next up is the away jersey, which I went with the alternate black jersey. This is something that they only wore, I believe it was only once, maybe twice, for sure the Arizona game uh, this season, and maybe Mississippi State, correct me if I'm wrong, I didn't go to that game. Um, yeah, I would have done the classic crimson jersey, which would have been the uh, New Mexico State, and then Aggies, kind of like a circle, and then the, uh, the number in the middle. But I couldn't figure out how to get that curved font on the game, so I just went with the black. Um, I just think it looks good. It looks pretty clean. Other than that, uh, it's pretty accurate. Really, the only thing is that the Aggies text is supposed to have a white outline. Again, you can't do that in 2K. There's just not a lot you can do with the Aggie, uh, with the text on it. So that's about as good as it can get. And then you can upload an alternate uniform, but I couldn't figure out how to get that New Mexico State logo that I'm sure you guys wanted. It's kind of like a, a beige kind of cream color jersey, like what I'm wearing, uh, that they wear at home. And it says Aggies with the T's kind of going up a little bit. And then it says New Mexico State. I couldn't find that logo and upload it. So I went ahead and I just created my own alternate jersey. Mm -hmm. We don't have to wear it at any point this season, but it's just something I created. Uh, let me go, go and tell me what you guys think about it. It's just a little homage to the state flag with the Zia symbol, NM State on there, and then the jersey uh, number in the middle, because I did think that looked pretty clean on their road jerseys. So yeah, just a little bit of hints of yellow, like with the state flag. Uh, but again, that's not something we have to wear at any point this season, just something I wanted to make because I was especially bored. Uh, but yeah, that is it. Uh, this is Trevlin Queen, in case you guys can't tell. Hopefully you can. I had to recreate these faces from scratch. And I'm going to get into that right now and show you uh, how accurate they look. Some of them are good. Other ones, uh, not so much. But a quick look at the court. We have the Pan American Center, which is pretty accurate. You have the Enum State in the middle. Uh, the WAC logos are supposed to be at the free throw line, uh, right? Like they'd be facing you if you were to go shooting the free throws. They can't have that on 2K, so I just went ahead and put it near midcourt. And then also the paint inside the lane is supposed to be a darker color. You can't do that either. Um, so I just made it all one solid color. And then these stands have to be one solid color as well. I know that the Pan American Center, um, it's mostly crimson with some yellow as well. Uh, but they don't have that. And actually in 2K, the color of the seats that you choose are the color of the shirts that the fans at the games are going to watch. So I went ahead and just made it crimson because nobody wears yellow at the New Mexico State games. It's mostly crimson. So yeah, that's it for that one. And a quick look at the roster so you guys can see it. Now what I went ahead and did um, is if I just made them how good they would be, like how good they'd be compared to NBA players, obviously this team would not be competitive. So I went ahead and I made it how good they are relative to the rest of the WAC. So that way they can go ahead and compete in this game, in this season and win some games. Because when you look at it, 
they still have a lot of guys like the Sixers obviously have a 91 and 89 overall. Uh, the Bucks have a 97 and an 87. So uh, New Mexico State doesn't really have any like one true superstar on their team, but more of just a balanced team. And I think that fits with who they are as a real team. So Trevor Queen is the top player here at an 88 overall. Um, I made him a really good dunker, a good three-point shooter, and then his perimeter defense also, I believe, is pretty good at an 82. Um, he's an 88, the highest, just because I feel like when he's healthy, he is the best player on the team and arguably the best player in the WAC. That's why he's getting draft consideration. Uh, other than that, we got Jabari Rice and Ivan Adekoachea at 86 overalls. Um, they're both tied at 86 since they were both all WAC first team selections this season. Uh, you look at Jabari, doesn't really like excel in anything on offense. He's just really good at everything on offense. So like close range shooting, mid range shooting, three point shooting. Uh, he's pretty much at the top of the list for all of the team. Uh, his perimeter defense is going to be really high as well at an 85 overall. And his vertical, I believe, is also pretty good. Uh, Ivan Adekoachea, um, in terms of scoring, it's all close range shots. Maybe a little bit of mid range, but not really. The three point shot, he doesn't shoot it much. Uh, free throws, he struggled this year. These are all their actual uh, free throw percentages from this season. I tried to make these ratings as accurate as possible. Um, and then he thrives on the boards, obviously, offensive rebounding. He's up there with the best of them. Um, defensive rebounding, he's really good. Um, other than that, we got 284s, which is Johnny McCants and A.J. Harris. Um, let's see. A.J. is going to be the fastest player on the team and the best passer on the team. So passing rating is 93. Uh, speed with the ball is a 91. Clayton Henry is going to be a 3 and D wing. So 84 rating on three-point shooting. And then also his perimeter defense is a 90, which I think is the second best on the team. Uh, Terrell Brown is going to be a three-point shooter first and foremost with the ability to also play some good defense since he was an all-WAC uh, defensive team selection of the season. So a 90 overall, also tied for second best on the team. Um, Evan Gilliard II is going to have really similar ratings to A.J. Harris, just a little bit less. So he's going to be the same speed, actually, but his passing is going to be just one or two below. Um, his three-point shot, I think, is better than Harris just by one. And, yeah, just a really quick player, uh, good facilitating and good three-point shooter. C.J. Bobbitt, just a well-rounded player off the bench. Uh, doesn't really excel at anything, but just solid at everything. His three-point shot, 81, which is actually pretty good for a big man. Um, his perimeter defense and his interior defense are about the same at a 78 since he can go in or out. And that's about it for him at a 78 overall. And then 79 overall is Sean Buchanan, who I have not much scoring wise for himself. I believe the 76 is pretty much right on average, uh, for the team for three point shooting. Um, probably inside is his best chance. He's just, he's a pretty good finisher when he chooses to shoot the ball. Um, passing and defense is where he's going to excel. So he's a 90 at passing. This is out of 100, by the way. Uh, and in perimeter, he's going to be a 91, which I think I made it the best on the team since he is the Mississippi menace. Um, Sean Williams, who recently transferred, I think it was last Friday. Um, there's an article about that on LasCrucesSunNews.com, so make sure to check that out. Um, yeah, he's a 78 overall. I don't know if you guys want him to still play on the team. This is last season's roster. Since he did play last season, I guess it would make sense that he does play. Um, but yeah, that's up to you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, good three-point shooter. That's obviously his bread and butter. Um, defense, a little bit lacking. But like I said, when he gets hot on offense, that's, uh, that's when he's going to really push the needle for the team. 78 overall. Also, just like Sean Williams for William McNair. Now, he is pretty much a paint beast. This guy is going to be working down low for close range shots. His dunking is up there. His standing duck, obviously, since he's 6'10", tallest on the team. Um, his post hook is pretty good. His post control. Uh, but other than that, not very fast. Um, no three-point shooting. No perimeter defense. Uh, just a guy who's really going to thrive down low. Um, at a 75 overall is DeJore Joseph. Now, this guy is pretty much just, just average at everything. Um, a 75 overall, like I said, so his three-point shooting is a 74. He's going to have a lot of things pretty much right around 75. Um, he mostly is going to be an offensive-minded wing, so he's looking to shoot the three ball with the ability to drive. He's got some good athleticism to him. Uh, not Nothing crazy on speed. I think that's just right on average. 
And, uh, yeah, that's DeJour Joseph, who didn't play too much. I think he played, like, five total minutes this season because he had a lot of injuries. So um, I think he'll have a much bigger role this year, probably provide some wing depth for the team, especially if Clayton Henry doesn't come back. But for right now, 75. And then the two Las Cruces natives are Bryce Rewalt and Tennessee Owens. And I just gave them the exact same ratings across the board since I think they bring the exact same thing to the table for New Mexico State, and that is three-point shooting. Um, average speed on the team, but yeah, the three-point shot, they're bread and butter without a doubt. And I actually went through and adjusted the tendencies for every single player as well. So that means I'm deciding what they're more likely to do, meaning for these guys, if they're open on the perimeter, they're going to be pulling the trigger as opposed to a guy like, let's say, William McNair. If he gets the ball at the perimeter, I put his tendencies pretty much to zero for three-point shot. He's not shooting that. But these guys, you know, it's catch and shoot for them. Um, and yeah, that 86 overall three-point rating, I just wanted to make it as high as possible. Um, so that way, as soon as they get in, they can provide some buckets like they normally do in uh, towards the end of the games. So yeah, that is the team. Um, let's see, a quick look at the minutes each team or each player is going to be getting. The starters, right around 26. I only gave AJ 25, just a little bit less um, because there are a lot of guards. Since you got Evan Gillard the second, uh, you got Sean Buchanan also in the mix, and then Tennessee and uh, Bryce. But other than that, 26 minutes pretty much for all the starters. Bench guys, Terrell Brown's going to be the sixth man. Clayton Henry also providing wing depth. Um, we said Evan, we got CJ Bobbitt as pretty much the best uh, backup big man on the team. William McNair getting about 11 minutes. All of these are pretty close to the minutes they got this season. Some of it is guessing since, you know, AJ Harris and Clayton Henry didn't play. I'm kind of just assuming how much they would have played and how much that would have affected the minutes of other guys. So because of that, like Sean Buchanan's minutes go down to 15. Um, CJ Bobbitt's minutes, I think, went down a little bit. Um, Bryce in Tennessee, I just went ahead and gave them three minutes each since that's about what they average. Um, like, let's say if they get into a game where it's garbage time, they're probably going to get in with about three minutes left. And then as of right now, you can only do 13 active players that you can actually sub in during a game. So I went ahead and I made Sean Williams a reserve since he did transfer. Unless you guys want me to play him, let me know. Um, and then DeJore Joseph also. And I am missing Wilfred Lakai. He didn't play at all last season because he had a torn LCL and meniscus. But I went ahead and I just flipped a coin between him and DeJore for who to put into the game because it only lets you to, uh, only allows you to have a roster of 15 people. So this is 15 right here. I flipped the coin and it was DeJore. But um, if we aren't going to play Sean, I can actually just take him off the team and I'll just go through and create Wilfred Lakai real quick and put him in. That's something I could have by tomorrow if you guys want. But um, either way, like Wilfred would be getting about maybe six or seven minutes a game on this team anyways. Um, he'll have a bigger role this season. I really like him as a player, but for last season's roster, I would say like five or six. So no, it's not gonna push the needle or change the outcome of the game, but let me know what you guys think. Um, and that's about it. And in case you guys are wondering, I don't have music playing right now. There are songs that are playing on 2K constantly when you're in the, uh, the main menus or just scrolling. The only reason why I have it on mute right now is because I'm planning on putting this live stream, the recorded video, on my separate YouTube channel that I have. It's the Straight Shooter uh, YouTube channel. It's separate from the Las Cruces Sun News one. I just made it the other day, and I want you guys to go ahead and subscribe to that. If you can, I would appreciate it because that's where all of my content is going to be going. I'm talking the, the Straight Shooter podcast. During the season, I'm going to be doing post-game interviews. I'll publish that on YouTube also, unedited, along with Jans' weekly press conference that he has during the season. Um, I do post-game like videos with the highlights. Um, I'm going to post that on there. I'm going to post this type of stuff in the off-season. And then I also have some other things planned for the year that will be um, involved with YouTube. So that's definitely something you guys want to check out. I'll go ahead and I'll tweet out the, um, the link to it. Um, to the channel, but it's just straight shooter. If you check, if you type in that and go to channels, you should be able to find it. But enough talking though. I just wanted to go ahead and get through all of that um, for those who didn't check out the article. And like I said, check out the article I posted last week, lcsunnews.com. It goes into all of this kind of stuff, the whole process, even the contract negotiations, which is really hilarious. Um, but yeah, now it is game time, guys. And our first game of the season is at home against the Miami Heat. Now, this is a game that's pretty interesting because you got a couple really good matchups. Jimmy Butler 
is a good two-way player, and then Trevor and Queen also is a really good two-way player. Both of them are at an 88 overall, so that's going to be a good matchup at the small forward spot. And then down low, Bam Adebayo and Ivan Adekoachea, two big men that don't really have a lot of size for that position, but are really strong, really great rebounders, good finishers, so that's going to be a good one. Um, the jerseys we are going to be wearing is the home whites as of right now, since we are playing at the Pan American Center. And yeah, now I am going to turn the volume on um, for the game since I can't get copyright claimed um, for game audio. But if I were to post this on YouTube with the game, with like the songs playing, then it would be claimed for copyright and the whole thing could get taken down. So that's why I have it on mute right now. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into it, guys. I'm looking forward to this. Thank you to everybody who is on right now. I think we've got like seven people or so. I appreciate it. Oh, we still got some music playing. <laughs> These copyrights are no joke, man. Honestly, like if it's three or four seconds, they can take down the whole video. They can make it to where you can't make any money off of this. Um, yeah, so that's why I'm going to be really careful with um, with putting this on, on mute. So matchups, AJ, Garden, Goron, Jabari, Garden, uh... Iguodala, which is going to be a little bit tough. Trev guarding Jimmy, Johnny guarding Jay Crowder, and then Yvonne guarding Bam. Alrighty, let's see if we got this right. Cool. So I'm kind of going to take a backseat roll of this, guys. I am not looking to talk too much unless you guys want to have like a Q&A session with me. Uh, I'm always down to talk about some New Mexico State basketball, so... Feel free to do that. If you want to leave some comments, I'll go ahead and I'll uh, I'll answer them. But other than that, I'm putting this on spectator mode and I'm just gonna watch it with you guys, man. That's what I'm looking forward to doing here. So let's go ahead and get that done. Awesome. Game time. The straight shooter uh, drink container, by the way. All right, got Jabari with the ball. I think most of the guys came out pretty good uh, with their faces. There are a couple that are really bad, like Johnny. That looks nothing like Johnny. Trev with the pull up. Ooh, good shot. Okay. Yeah, Trev's just going to be a dominant scorer, man. I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, he can get drafted as well. That's going to be really interesting to see. I don't even think it'd really be a question had he not got an injury. Oh, man. Okay, Yvonne running it up the court. Maybe. Okay, okay. <laughs> I was about to say, Yvonne running up the court, maybe. Not the most realistic thing with the ball, but hey, just give it a try, man. Tough take. Yeah, that's a foul. <clears throat> I tried to give all the players their actual, um, like the accessories they wear too, like Trev has that, um, like an elbow pad that he wears. You know, AJ rocks like the double um, um, wristbands, or not wristbands, whatever they're called. So yeah, I tried to make it as close as possible, but like I said, some of the guys are just, <laughs> it didn't work out. Uh, especially like Terrell, um, CJ, and Sean Williams. They kind of have that hair that like, it's dreads, it's braided, but it's falling down in the front of their face. Uh, 2K won't let you do that. The only option is like dreads that are like tied up in the back. So when you do that, it just looks nothing like Terrell. It looks nothing like like Sean Williams, but what are you going to do? Oh, good D. That's a tough shot. I just wish I could have put Adam Young in the game, man. 
have him be the commentator or Jack Nixon, you know? Pull up again. I'm excited to see how this plays out, man. I think I think I simulated one game um, in like a different season to see how they do. And they only lost by about 10 points to the 76ers. So they should be pretty competitive. Good take. Good take by Jabari. You know, he still has a ways to go, but he put on a decent amount of muscle. I think that went pretty under the radar is how much stronger he got um, this past summer. He actually stayed here in Las Cruces instead of going home to, um, to Houston um, in order to just work on his game, get bigger, and it paid off for him, man. He had such a great season, and uh, I think a lot of that is the amount of muscle that he put on because that just helps with your confidence, too. Like right there, good take. Over Iggy. I've got like the laptop over here on the side. In case y'all do comment, I can see it. That's a pull up. Oh, got to pull up on that. I actually changed the coach's name to Chris Jans too. <laughs> but um, it doesn't let you like mess around with the face of the head coaches. There's just like literally 200 face presets. Hey, are you on Xbox? Says Fatboy4760. I'm actually on the PS4, man. Um, yeah, so for those who are on the PS4, if you want to download the uh, this roster that I created and the jerseys, uh, my gamer tag is jmart underscore 956. So that's J-M-A-R-T underscore 956. If you look that up on 2K20, um, you can upload everything that I have here, from the court to the jerseys to the um, the players. So feel free to do that. Appreciate you tuning in, though, um, fat boy. <laughs> I feel like I'm dissing you by saying that, but that is his username. And if you guys want to uh, get worked on PlayStation on some 2K, man, I'll... I'll take on all challengers, too. Jabari is going at Iguodala. I didn't expect that, man. I know he's past his prime, but that size advantage alone. Ooh, yeah, that's a foul. <clears throat> I even tried to make their their foul tendencies. Like, that's Chris Jans right there. <laughs> doesn't look anything like him, but it, I changed his name to Chris Jans, and I made, like, his uh, coaching abilities the same. So I think I put – I should have showed this, but I showed his – I put his um, defense at an, at an A, I think it was, and then the offense at an A-. minus. Uh, this is all relative to the WAC, remember. Um, and then I made – on offense, they lean towards a three-point shot, and they usually lean towards guard play. Uh, but other than that, they're pretty balanced on defense. And um, the amount of minutes, obviously, it's really well balanced. They don't really have anybody that's going to get, like, 30 minutes a night. You know what I mean? Also wearing a hat right now because uh, I'm in need of that haircut, man. I really do need it pretty badly, as I'm sure a lot of you all do. Okay, go to work on him, Jabari. Oh, that's a tough. Yeah, Bam's gonna do that, man. Good take. It's just funny seeing AJ chase after Andre Godal. Like, I don't think you're going to pin that off the backboard, my guy. <laughs> I 
Look at that. I think we got Evan about to sub in. I think I saw. Evan, it doesn't really look like him either. I apologize to Evan. I, I just couldn't get his face down. Damn, Bam is swatting them. Step back. Good board by Jabari. That's a good matchup. Go at him. Ah, oh, you gotta back him down, man. Oh, he's gonna take that. Yeah, he's gonna take that. Good finish. I think we saw, I think I saw around 11 people on now. I appreciate it, man. I really have no idea how many people are going to be showing up for this type of thing. Because I don't really know how many people actually use Twitch. I personally don't. I had to make an account for this. Um, but like I said, this isn't even something I'm doing on the clock. I'm just doing it to bring you guys as much content as I can. I'm working on other real journalism stuff, I promise you. I got some stuff with New Mexico State uh, basketball in the works. I'll probably have, I'll for sure have an article out this week related to New Mexico State basketball. And um, hopefully something really special and in-depth in the coming weeks. I don't want to give it away. But, um, yeah, I'm working on other real stuff, guys. I'm not just sitting around uh, spending all my time on 2K. I promise you. Let me skip this time. New Mexico State's looking good so far, though, man. All right, there's Terrell. You see, he's got the... The ponytail, it won't let me just have it where it can hang down on his face like he like how he has it. And it wouldn't let me do the uh he kinda has like it's dyed red at the bottom. Tough take by Evan. Or the guy who looks nothing like Evan, but is named Evan. <laughs> it's the best I could do, man. I recreated it from scratch. They look nothing like like Evan I'm pretty sure started off as like a white guy and I had to completely reconstruct him to look somewhat like himself. Terrell with the ground. That's a pull up. Yep. Good shot. Is Terrell wearing Jordan 4s? I think, yeah, I think he is wearing Jordan 4s. <laughs> That's kind of weird. I made sure that because obviously New Mexico State is sponsored by Under Armour. So I made sure that uh, the whole team was wearing Under Armour shoes. But apparently <laughs> apparently Terrell was watching that uh, that Michael Jordan uh, 30 for 30 yesterday and decided I'm just going to pull out the Jordan Force for this game. I mean, all right. I don't know how the school is going to feel about it, but okay. Do your thing, man. Good rip. Let's see if he'll dunk it. Uh, I gave Evan some decent hops because if you guys have seen, I post like some uh, pregame dunks that they do sometimes throughout the season. Evan gets up there. He he can he can dunk it for sure. He hasn't done it in a game, at least not at NMSU yet. But I I gave him some hops, hoping that he would at some point this season. We'll see what happens. Like Sean Buchanan, I gave some hops too. Because he'd he be pulling off some really good dunks. Like, I'm talking lobbing it to himself. You know. A little windmill action. He, he, can, he can get up there. Ooh. I didn't know Bam had that in him. That just catch and shoot, fade away from the mid range. Okay. I love his game though. Just those undersized bigs always just work the hardest, man. Oh yeah. Three ball, cash. They are on fire right now. I really wish I couldn't see. I could have seen Clayton Henry more this year. I didn't that one game. Jan stocks so highly of him. 
Um, I'm paraphrasing, but uh, here, one second. <laughs> Tennessee Owens, shout out for tuning in, man. 11 point lead seems big enough to put me in. Hey, start warming up, man. Start stretching the legs and everything. I got you and Bryce down for three minutes every game, like regardless of the score. But um, if it's a blowout down the stretch, I'll manually sub you guys in. Let you get the stats up. <laughs> but uh, like I was saying with Clayton, um, I'm paraphrasing because I don't remember what exactly the quote was. But uh, Jans was saying, like, I think it was after that New Mex or Northern New Mexico game when he played, or sometime before it. Um, he had said that, that Clayton was going to be as good of a player as Trevor and Queen was this season. Obviously not the same, like, playing style because they bring different things to the table. But, like, in terms of how much they produce for the team and their impact, like, Clayton was going to be up there. He put on a lot of muscle also, kind of similar to Jabari. Um, a really great defender. He had gotten that three-point shot down pretty consistently. Uh, just a shame that he didn't get to play very much, man. But, um, but you know, Jans did say in that interview with Adam Young a couple weeks ago that um, the redshirt process for Clayton looks to be a home run. That's a quote from Jans, looks to be a home run. So I'm assuming he's coming back. Um, he's going to have a really big role on the team for sure because they're not going to have a lot of wing depth. So he can easily go in and start at that small forward spot, for sure, this upcoming season if he does come back. And we'll see if AJ does too, but that kind of looks a little bit more like a long shot to me. Since he did play, um, I think he played the Cal Baptist game. That's where he got hurt. But that's past the halfway point of the season, which is um, one of the things if you're applying for uh, – an exception in next year of eligibility is that you got to get injured before the second half of the season. Also, the fact that he's already a redshirt is going to make it hard. And he wasn't injured when he redshirted his first time around. He just said transferred from um, Ohio State. So we'll see what happens with the man. I, obviously, I would love to see both of them back just because you hate for someone's college career to end on the sideline. You know what I mean? But we'll see what happens. Terrell, layup, easy money. Six points off the bench. I might have to turn the difficulty up a little bit because they are smoking them. I'm talking like I'll turn it up the next game or something, but I didn't expect them to be blowing them out like this. Hey, I mean, I think they're just shooting hot, though. They're shooting like 50-some percent, so it's a long game. We'll see what happens. Derek Jones. As a freak athlete, man. A freak athlete. Although Aaron Gordon should have won that dunk contest, I'm just saying. If you dunk over Taco Fall, it's a GG. Oh. It's a good look. William McNair, that looks nothing like Will. I'm sorry, Will. I just could not figure out how to get your looks down, man. Pull up, Duncan Robinson. That's going in more times than not. That guy is, he's a sniper. Pull up for Clayton? Okay. I don't know if Clayton pull up on a fast break like that. I really like his uh, decision making. That's one of the things I like the most about Clayton. He's not a guy that needs to get his shots up. He more like just shoots when the opportunity is there. Which is what you need, honestly. Especially on a team like New Mexico State. They're not a team that's going to have... Most likely, they're not going to have the black player of the year, you know, because they're not going to have a guy averaging 20 points a game. It's going to be a couple guys averaging 10, you know. Wait, wait. Is that Bryce in the game? Or Owens? No, that's Owens, right? Hey, Tennessee, I didn't even do it, man. I didn't even sub you in. It, it just decided to. <laughs> A second quarter appearance by Tennessee Owens. I like it, man. Oh, and, and Bryce. I didn't even see that. Okay. Okay. Mexico State. 
You're no little cocky. I like it though. You gotta give it to him, man. You gotta give it to him. Pull up. Ah, uh, I want them to score so bad. Oh. Hey, every look is a good look for these guys, man. I am not mad at that shot attempt. They are running a small ball lineup. Bryce, Tennessee, and Sean on the court. Ah. <laughs> There's Bryce in the comments. Let's go. I like it, man. We got to get you an open look. We got to get you on the scoreboard, you and Tennessee. Uh, Nasty Nack says, pretty cool. I appreciate you for tuning in, man. Yeah, I tried to make it look as real as possible. It took a very long time. Ten hours for those who didn't um, read the article that I put out on this. It's a tough take. It's only a seven-point game, man. I didn't really notice they were cutting into that. Oh, good block by Will. Dish that. Pass that, pass that. Oh, just take it. Okay, CJ. I'm excited to see uh, to see Will next season, man. I've been saying I think that jump from, from your freshman year to your sophomore year is the biggest you're going to have in terms of production. Mostly because you're going to get a bigger role more times than not, but also just you you get a sense of what that college basketball atmosphere is like, uh, the speed of the game, you know. And, um, yeah, I think he could be big. He's he's probably going to start at center right away because they don't have much. There it is. Oh. Put Queen in, my son. I don't know if you saw at the beginning of the game, he was getting buckets. I think he had the first four points. So he'll, he'll come in for sure, and he'll, he'll get on the scoreboard a little bit. But like I was saying, um, I think Will's going to be in for a big year. Not as big of a jump production as like what you saw with Jabari this year. But uh, I think he has, he has the, the body, obviously, to throw his weight around. Like I think that's the big thing for him is he just has to get his confidence up down low. Like... This is a really small New Mexico State team, just traditionally. They usually run pretty undersized. And Will 6'10", man, like, like right, that right there, you know what I mean? Like, six points, that's exactly what you need, man, that aggressiveness. Um, but, yeah, like, he's going to be one of the few guys, or really the only guy on the team that's going to have an advantage every single night, pretty much. There's not too many guys in the WAC. Other than like maybe Alessandro Lever uh, for Grand Canyon, it has that same size as him down low. It's just going to be a matter of like, are you calling for the ball? Are you looking to throw your weight around down low? If you can do that, man, he, he could be really productive for New Mexico State next season. And the years after that, like he's only going to be a wretched sophomore. But, um, but yeah, there, he's not going to have too many... Uh, too many guys to compete with for minutes. Like, Mayan Kerr won't be able to to play until he, I think, the end of the or beginning of the spring semester. So like late December. Um, maybe Wilfred Lakai, I think, is like six, seven, six, eight. If you maybe you could slide him into the center or slide Johnny if you need to. But um, Will's really the only true center on the team, so he's gonna get his chances, man, for sure. Um, Equus, or I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Equus from NMSU. Great stuff, Justin. I appreciate that. I appreciate you tuning in. Let me adjust this camera real quick. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, it's getting a little low. They pushed the lead back up to 12, man. 
getting a little close there for a second. Evan with the bucket or the free throw. <clears throat> I think I made his free throws at about, I think like a 70. That's one of the things I think is going to be a, a focal point for him next season is just working on that consistency there because he had sent out some tweets about it and stuff too. Like he's he's had a couple where I just maybe it's just a matter of focus or something like that or fatigue. I don't know, but definitely if he can be more consistent at the line, like he's really good at drawing contact. Like he, his speed just allows him to get into the lane and, and get up in there. So I think a consistent shot from the free throw line is going to be a big addition to his game for sure. Travel. Nasty knack. There's Trev for you, man. He's in the game. I think Yvonne's probably the most realistic guy that I created. To be honest, they had like, they have like preset faces that you can choose and then edit them. And there was a guy who just automatically looked a lot like Yvonne. So I kind of didn't do too much. I just gave him a headband and a little bit of facial hair, but I'll take credit for it, man. There he is, my son queen, says Nasty Nag. There you go, man. The Maryland Mamba in the game. That's a take. Pull up. Oh. There it is. There it is. Throw it down on him. We need to get him out on the fast break so he can throw something off the glass to himself like he did, uh, what was the I think Cal Baptist game? That was insane, man. Another traveling, wow. I played 2K a decent amount and I you rarely see travels. That's that defense by Trev though, I guess. going on here oh there we go Ooh, jump ball that's the matchup of the game for sure it's Trevin and Jimmy Butler He's taking that. Oh, good find. Great find. I was really expecting a closer game for this one. <laughs> Nasty Nag says yes. Oh, Jabari. This camera keeps slipping. My bad, guys. Let me go ahead and adjust this some more. Is that a little bit better? No, not really. Shows you how amateur I am with this, guys. I was literally using some duct tape to keep this thing in place because I don't know what it was. Just, I think my TV's just like not thick enough because there's a little stand you can put on the top where my uh, camera is, and I guess it's just not thick enough, so it's kind of like slanting down a little bit. But uh, it is what it is, man. I've never done any live stream like this before, so I. I I'm still very much learning, but I've got one game every month to practice this, so by the end of the month, it's going to be a professional setup, I promise you.
Good take. Is that 10 already? Wow. Yeah, he's a scorer, man. <clears throat> he definitely, um, I think Dev Evan really embraced kind of having to be that facilitator for the team this season. You know, like with AJ out and then Trev is out for a while because he was leading the team in assists for a minute too. Um, but with both of them out, man, I think he did a really, I think Evan did a solid job of being a facilitator for the team. Uh, but obviously, like, naturally this guy is a scorer. You saw it at UTEP when he led the team in scoring. A good three-point shot, really good speed, like I said. Um, but yeah, I think he made a good, like a conscious effort, I think, to make that extra pass this season. And he's, he's probably going to have to do that again this upcoming year, especially if AJ doesn't come back. Because they're not really going to have too much depth at that one spot, you know. C.J. Roberts probably immediately becomes like a backup point guard for them. So Evan's going to be looking at, I would guess, like that 25-minute range that we saw with players like Jabari and Trev last season. Good find. Oh. Oh. Nasty knack. Yes, clean. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Is this, is this Trev's mom by any chance? Isn't her name Nancy? I'm just making that connection right now. Because I, I know she's saying my son. But I like, you know, some people say my son. So I'm sorry. Is that actually Trev's mom? If it is, how are you doing? I think we, I think we met um, after the senior night game for a little bit. If you were in the press conference. You were in the press conference room, I think. That's cool. I didn't make that connection. I'm probably late. I think everybody else probably realized that, and I'm the last one. But, uh, yeah, that's awesome. I appreciate you for tuning in. I think her name is Nancy. Now I'm, now I'm really wondering. I'm sorry. Let me see. I know she follows me. Let me. Yeah. Yeah, her name is Nancy. I'm sorry about that. That's, that's cool. <clears throat> yeah, Trevor's a great kid. It's always, I always love talking to him. He's a really good interview. Really everybody on the team, like I haven't had a single person that I've talked to on the team that you know, some players, some players just give you one-word answers or one-sentence answers. All of them are really great about talking, super respectful. I'm sure a lot of that goes into just Jan's running a tight ship, honestly. He does a good job about that. She says, yeah, okay, yeah, it is. Hi, how's it going? That's cool. Let's get this buzzer beater. Pull up. Bank, ah. Uh, okay, yeah, it says I'm mom. Yeah, no, Trev is a, a great interview for sure. Cause I'm doing good. That's good to hear. Hope everyone's doing good, man. This this pandemic really has affected a lot of people. I hope all of y'all are doing well. Families are doing well. I hope you guys are practicing social distancing, staying safe, wearing masks if you're going outside, all that kind of stuff. I just, I was late to the party, honestly. I should have gotten my mask earlier, but I just barely ordered mine. I've been waiting for it. That's cool. I've had a lot of people telling me that they were really looking forward to this. I really wasn't sure what kind of a turnout we'd get for this. Because I don't know how many people really, like, are into watching a video game, you know? Let me go ahead and skip this. Or here are the stats real quick. 50% from the floor. William McNair, 6-7 and seven already. That's impressive. 
I forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> Alright, let's skip this. Yeah, I was saying I really wasn't sure how many people would turn out for this, but um, I think people just honestly are starving for New Mexico State content. And honestly, I'm the same way. Like, I was expecting to be to be making a trip for the NCAA tournament. You know, like I didn't know where it was gonna be, but I was ready for it. <clears throat> like, like I cover a lot of stuff for the paper. I do a lot of high school football. That's why I'm kind of starting to shift my focus to in case you guys haven't seen on Twitter like I've been writing some stuff for that but like basketball far and away is is top priority for me like it's the thing I want to cover um, when I find like my final job eventually I want to write for the NBA so like any sort of basketball content I can get like I'm, I'm all for it I told him to prepare for speeches he's very he's very well spoken for sure like, you can already tell, um, like, there are certain players, especially if they're younger, like, I'm not going to say they're nervous, but they're just not as, like, as fluent when they're talking to reporters and stuff like that. But, like, Trev already, when I talk to him, it's like you're talking to a guy who's media trained. Like, you're talking to someone who is a pro already. I'm sure he's getting a lot of... Uh, even more experience with that now. I heard he's been talking to teams too. I know the Spurs for sure, the Jazz. I wanna say the Wizards, I think. Um, KTSM put out the official teams, I forgot what it was. Clippers, Jazz, Spurs, and Wizards that he's been talking to. Yeah, I'm sure more are gonna reach out to him. Bryce says, 16-point lead at the half. Time for T and I to start stretching. You know it, man. I might have to bump y'all's minutes up. Because I think I I gave y'all three minutes a game. So I don't know if it, like, caps out at that. You know what I mean? Because I'm pretty sure you guys already played three minutes. But I think if it's, like, a blowout or something, they'll still put you guys in for more minutes, I'm pretty sure. Nancy says, me too, I was ready for the tournament also. Yeah, that, I was really looking forward to that. That that day that it got canceled was insane. Um, I think I wrote like three articles that day. <clears throat> Just about everything that was going on. Um, people having to cancel their flights or like get refunds on their flights or schedule it early. Um, and I actually ended up staying there because I was supposed to stay there until Saturday because I think no Sunday I was flying out because Saturday was the last day something like that um, but I was there for like three or four days and we just didn't even try to to reschedule our flights me and our photographer uh, Nathan Fish we just ended up staying there and if there were any like Aggie fans still there we he took photos I wrote articles like it, it was interesting but definitely we were there to, to cover some basketball and especially the NCAA tournament, that would have been great. But so I'm sure they would have gone to. They just look far and away like the better team this year. Uh, see, this camera keeps sliding. Get your orders in for the, the straight shooter merch, guys, as you can see. Got that right there. I actually got it as a gift from uh, my aunt. I don't think anybody else would want to buy it. I don't think anyone wants to walk around with a uh, with my face on their drinking container. 
But uh, for me personally, I'll take it. <laughs> also, just while y'all are on, if any of y'all were following my my straight share podcast, thank you so much for tuning in this year. Like, I honestly wasn't expecting to get that amount of support and feedback for it. Um, Cause it was hard to do every single week. Like I've said it before. I, I did that on my off days. Cause that it came out on Sundays and I'm off Sundays and Mondays. So I would always record that on Sunday. Uh, that's when Jans would have his uh, weekly press conference. So I go out and get quotes. I talk to the players afterwards, stuff like that. So it was, it took a lot to, to put that out, but like you guys made it worth it without a doubt. I don't know what I'm going to do next year, though, because, um, like, I know they got a lot of new players coming in, and I do that nickname thing <clears throat> where I come up with nicknames for players, but for a lot of these guys, I've already given them nicknames, so I'm going to have to come up with something else to to end some of those interviews. Pull up Buchanan. You know the fans love seeing Sean score. Just such an unselfish player, man. I know Jans was talking about um, how Sean hopes to to be a coach at some point after his career is over. Possibly getting on the staff in New Mexico State, I think he had mentioned. Nothing set in stone, obviously, but but I can see it. Like just from the limited amount of times that I talked to him, like he's he's got really high basketball IQ. As you can see, like by the way he passes, like he sees the floor really well. He memorizes plays like it's nothing. Like he was playing small forward at one point when when Treb was out. Just because he was one of the only guards that actually knew all the plays for that. Like like they had the smallest small forward in Division One basketball, probably in college basketball in general. Just because he's he's that prepared for any situation, you know. Bryce says, Justin, where were you working before Cruces and what were you covering? Curious journalist. I didn't know you were a journalism major, Bryce. Um, I was working in Minot, North Dakota. So that was an hour and a half drive from the Canadian border. Um, it was a big move. I actually was living in San Antonio before that. Um, yeah, I was covering high school sports. It was at the Minot Daily News, a town maybe half the size of Las Cruces. So I was covering, I say high school sports, but it was a little bit of everything. Like it was literally every high school sport with football, softball, hockey, wrestling. Um, but then I did, there's like a minor league baseball team over there. There's a division two college that I covered some basketball there. Um, so I pretty much did everything. That was my first job I could get out of college. Uh, I graduated from UT Austin in 2018. And after like a couple of months of not being able to find a job, I finally got like an offer that at least paid well enough for me to move out of state and it was over there so I just I just took it as like almost like an extra year of school like like I was there to to build up my resume um work on my writing and then and leave after like a year or two and luckily that paper was really good where they were telling me like hey you know we know it's you're not looking to stay here the rest of your life so if you get another job go ahead and take it so that's what I did I left after about 11 months and came here but um, yeah, that's where I started off as North Dakota as a high school reporter. Sometimes you just gotta get your foot in the door, man. I, I say that and like making connections is the biggest thing. So like get your foot in the door, make connections and practice, like write as often as you can. Uh, even before I got this job, I had my own sports blog and I was just writing like game recaps for NBA games. Like, I would watch a game on TV, kind of like what I'm doing right now, and just use the post-game interview quotes to write my own game recap, as if I was actually in the media room, you know? But, um... Yeah, if you're a journalism major and you're writing stuff, man, feel free to send it to me. I'll I'll take a look at it and I'd be happy to like give you some pointers and stuff anytime. 
you can just message me on Twitter or something like that. It's really annoying me how much this camera keeps slowly sliding down. Like now my hat is gone. Let me see. I guess that's good enough. It's probably going to still continue to slide down. I'll have that fixed for tomorrow's game. I promise, guys. This game is a blowout. Oh my gosh. Sweet, appreciate it, man. Yeah, man, anytime. Feel free to reach out anytime if you need any help. I can put in a good word for you in, in North Dakota <laughs> if you're looking for it. I can. Although that weather is something else, man. Because like I said, I grew up in Texas, so I was not used to that weather. I drive a Camaro, so it's uh, rear wheel drive, so I had to get snow tires. And I was, if I had stayed there for like another year, I honestly would have just bought a truck or something like that. Because even like an inch or two of snow, my car was just, just swiveling. <laughs> you see the camera's already sliding. What did I say? Oh man. I really don't want to do this while I'm live, but I have to guys. I'm breaking out the duct tape. This is real professional stuff, guys. Cause you know, we're a, we're a USA Today paper, top of the line equipment and resources, nothing but the best. Oh yeah, this is going to look real nice, guys. I promise you. <laughs> Let's see, is that good? There we go. Kinda. <laughs> Close enough. Yes, sir. High quality stuff right there, guys. Ladies and gentlemen. Sorry about that. It's work stuff. I am definitely going to have to raise the difficulty on this game. A 33. Oh, Yvonne with the steal. Throw it down, Yvonne. Ah. Okay, yeah. I have to make this way more difficult. Like, Miami's a good team. It's not like they're playing, like, like the Knicks or something like that, you know? <laughs> they're going to double up an NBA team. <laughs> I'll go to work on them. Give that to Yvonne, man. He's got Kendrick Nunn on him. Yes, sir. Ooh, good shot.
Sorry about this, guys. Is Evan at the free throw line? I think it's hard to tell because it looks nothing like Evan. I'm gonna have to go back and I I completely took out his chin. Like his face caves in. I apologize for that, Evan. I did you I did you dirty, man. Kendrick, good take. Ooh, right back. Come from, is it Oakland he came from? <laughs> I'm not even gonna read that comment. <laughs> Y'all get to see it, but I'm just, I'm not gonna read that comment. <laughs> Ooh, Derek Jones would dunk that, man. Tyler is what I go by. Says, what's your favorite NMSU game you have covered? That's a great question. Um, It's got to be between the Utah Valley game and the Cal Baptist game. Uh, obviously, like, the Cal Baptist game was a blowout, but just the fact that it was, like, history on the line and they rolled out with the starting lineup, you know what I mean? Like... That was just a really cool moment. Every single play. Yeah, it's got to be that game. The more I'm talking about it, like, every single play, just people would, like, erupt for it. Like, the bench was going crazy. The, the players on the court were going crazy. Just the, the atmosphere, I would say, was far and away the best. Like, the craziest game I've been to is, is definitely that Utah Valley one where Jabari hit the game winner. Um, I was... I was happy that he hit the game winner because, you know, great for him and great for NMSU to win. But I post, I have to send my articles to print literally five minutes after the game's over. That's why if you look at the print paper, I don't even have quotes in the article because um, I talked to Jans in the press conference like maybe 15, 20 minutes after the game. And by then everything has to be in print already. I, I can go through and add it online anytime I want. But, um, yeah, for, for that game, like for really close games like that, you really don't know how to write the opening intro to it, you know, because you don't know who won the game. And I like to start off all my articles with scenes, like of some really big play. And for that one, it was pretty much that last play. So as soon as that play happened, I had to, first of all, publish the video because I was recording it, send out the tweet that the game was final, and then in like three minutes, type up like a quick hundred word intro thing. So that was definitely the most exciting and the most stressful game I've covered. But I'd say my favorite one is the Cal Baptist one. Just because like the energy was off the charts for that game. Somebody said NMSC would lose by 50. Um, yeah, I, I said it earlier. I made them their... Uh, the players' overall ratings relative to how good they are in the WAC, so that way they could be competitive. I did not think <laughs> that they were going to blow out a team by like 50. So, hey, this is the first game. It's a test run. I'm gonna go through and I'll. I won't lower the players' ratings, but I'll adjust like the simulation difficulty. So right now I have it at a 91 out of 100. I'll probably boost it up to like a 95, 96, and see if that makes a closer game. Hey, there's Bryce in the game. I'm assuming Tennessee's in there too, right? They have to be in at the same time. Yes, sir. There he is. There he is. Oh, that's a tough take. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so this game, I'm going to be doing this through trial and error. Uh, this first game was a lot more of a blowout than I expected. Oh, Trev. Yes, sir. 
he would have gone off the glass in real life. <laughs> um, but yeah, this game is all trial and error. So next game will definitely be a lot closer. I'll make it a, a tougher simulation difficulty. Because yes, this is extremely unrealistic. Like, even by like, even by me putting them in relative to the rest of the WAC teams, like they should not be blowing out this these teams by like thirty for sure. Is that Solomon Hill? I forgot he was on the Heat. Honestly, that doesn't look too much. It it's kind of like Bryce. Bryce, if you're in the group chat still, or if you're on this thing still, let me know if that looked like you. Do I get a thumbs up for that? Is it passable at least? I think it's passable. I'm not gonna give it like an A by any means, but I would say it's like like a flat B. I think I give myself on that. I've said it before. I think Yvonne looks the most like himself. It's probably Vaughn. I think Tennessee. It looks pretty close to him. I think I got the jawline right. Oh! He had it. I think Trev, it kind of looks like him a little bit. Close enough. Good rip. Pass that. Ah, oh, I wanted them to find Tennessee in the corner. Uh, Tyler is what I go by. How much did you know about NMSE before you came to Crucis? Oh, wait, real quick. Bryce said, I think it's pretty solid. I recently shaved it. Oh, you shaved the beard? Okay. I can go through and edit that. I can take it out. But, hey, I appreciate that. I got a solid, guys. That's pretty good. Uh, uh, to answer your question, Tyler, how much did I know about NMSU before Curses? I mean, I knew about NMSU. You know, like I knew New Mexico State Aggies. Um, but I didn't, I didn't obviously know anything about, like, players' tendencies and their playing style and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, it's funny because actually, all right, Bryce with the bucket. Bri oh, he dunked it! He dunked it! <laughs> what? <laughs> what just happened? I didn't even give him like a crazy vertical or anything like that. Let's go! Let's go! Okay, I might have to adjust some stuff after all. Bryce says, yo, that's wild. I'm sorry, I keep getting off track, Tyler. Um, I knew about New Mexico State, but it's funny because um, I fill out the March Madness like brackets on ESPN every year, and I had NMSU as, I think it was a round of 32 team. I had them getting past Auburn as one of the upsets because, you know, there's always like a 5-12, and I thought they were really solid. Like, I like Trev. I thought he had good size. I always think that good guard play is like the best way to make a run in the tournament. And obviously they had the guys for that, like Terrell Brown, who fully healthy, plus AJ Harris, like that's a really good combo. Um, so I would say I did like shallow research on them just because I did research while I was looking up for my March Madness bracket, you know? And then obviously once I got the job, I had like, I think I had like a month before I actually moved from when I accepted the job to when I moved from North Dakota. And I watched any game I could find, any highlights I could find on YouTube. Um, there's a, a YouTube account called NMSU, I think Athletics Archive, which has a lot of their full games. So I watched those games in full. I did all my research, stuff like that. And um, that's how I think I found out a lot more about the team. But before that, it was kind of like base level knowledge of them. Uh, Nancy, Trevor's mom says I did good on his character. Let's go. I'm getting nothing but thumbs up. Thank you. Like, yeah, I thought it came out pretty solid. There really isn't too much. I know he has the, uh, I don't know if he still has it, but in, in the photo I saw, he has like a, the eyebrow where like part is like a line going straight up. You can't do that kind of stuff. Um, but I felt like I got like the facial structure pretty, pretty down.
That's cool though. It's cool. I wanna hear <laughs> I should have reached out to, to Johnny and see <laughs> and see what he thinks, because that far and away that's the guy who looks the least like himself. Johnny McCancer looks nothing like him. So I really do apologize. They didn't have his hairstyle, first of all. He kind of has like, like it's a little bit of like a curly type of hair, but it's not like really long or anything. It's just slight curls. They don't have that option. And I just, I couldn't get like his facial structure down. And I've like gone back and tried to fix. I probably tried to fix it like three times. <laughs> it just still does not look like him. Oh, pull up. Oh, you got the space. Whoa, whoa, Will for, for deep too? Okay. Good board. I'm still shocked right now that Bryce got that dunk. That was insane. That was insane. Let me know what you guys think. I'm thinking of, uh, for those who weren't here for earlier in the, the uh, live stream, I'm going to post this full stream. Well, I'm planning as of right now to post this full stream on my YouTube channel, which is uh, Straight Shooter. I'll tweet out a link to it, or I can probably put it on this description. But um, I don't know if I should post this full like hour and a half live stream on the YouTube video or on the YouTube channel, or just do like highlights of this on the YouTube channel. So like I can condense it to like maybe like a 30 minute thing. I don't know what you guys would prefer. Uh, Bryce says I can barely touch room. Hey, 2K says otherwise, man. 2K says otherwise. That's hilarious, though. So I guess it is like, because like I said, I gave Bryce in Tennessee three minutes per game, which is like what they normally get. Um, but I guess if it is like a blowout, they'll give like the bench players even more minutes. So that's pretty cool. Find him in the corner. Ah, oh, Sean would have found him. There it is. There it is. This camera is upsetting me how it keeps sliding down. I really need to fix that. Like as soon as this live stream is over, I'm going to mess around with that. Ooh, good step back. Oh, I thought he had... Go right back up! Green! Green light! Is that four for him? We got to get Tennessee on the boards, man. We have to get Tennessee on the boards, man. <laughs> I like how the two points from Bryce aren't three-point shots. Like... Like, he's got to be hoisting up these threes, man. That's what I really... Like, the dunk is crazy, but I want to see them hit a three because that's obviously the most realistic thing. Tennessee, too. I turned their tendencies up to where they would, but I, I don't know why they're not pulling it. I might have to go back. <laughs> that's Johnny McCants. <laughs> it looks nothing like him. Oh, my gosh. I'm so sorry, Johnny. Oh, I feel so bad every time I see it. Oh, man. Ooh! William McNair! And Johnny with the block. Tennessee says Bryce passed the ball. <laughs> hey, when you're hot, you gotta feed the hot hand, man. If he's green lighting it, you know what I mean? You got to give it to him. But, yeah, I need to see Tennessee get on the boards. If it's – if there's under a minute left, I'll actually take over the game, and I'm, I'm going to try to score with Tennessee because we got to see him. I don't even think he's attempted a shot yet. We, he at least has to get a shot attempt. Good block. I think that's Johnny again. Oh, Tennessee did score? Oh, I'm sorry. He says, he says, I'm a bucket. Yes, you are right. My bad, my bad. <laughs> Was it a three or a two? I didn't see it. How did I miss that? 
I'm, I was probably going on a rant about something. Two layups? Wow, I was sleeping. How did I miss all that? Ooh, good take. My bad. <laughs> all right, so I won't take over the game then in the last minute. But all right, hey, that's fair though. They both, they both got some buckets. Green, there it is. There, it's like they knew what we were talking about, man. So no three point attempts from the two of them, or no three point mix. That's wild. Ooh, tough shot. You know what you got to do right here, Tennessee. I want you to shoot it. Or let Bryce shoot it. Oh, he's going to work. He's going to work. The Euro? Oh. He went with the Euro, no less. The audacity. <laughs> there, oh, shoot that, Johnny. I might have to adjust Johnny's tendencies because he hasn't done much from the perimeter. There it is. There it is. Oh. Come on. <laughs> I put Bryce's nickname as Lights Out. Tennessee, this is very realistic. We only shoot it when we have it. Hey, facts. That's funny. But, um, yeah, 2K won't, like, the commentator won't actually say William McNair, Tennessee Owens. You have to give a nickname to them, and it's like, you can't even type in. Oh, there it is. There it is. <sighs> you can't even type in a nickname. Like, if you could, I would just type in the ones that I gave on the Straight Shooter podcast. Um, but it's like a set. There's like 30 different nicknames you could choose from or something like that. So yeah, Bryce, I gave Lights Out. I forgot when I gave Tennessee. But like William McNair, I gave The Beast. Um, Trevor and Queen. Uh, I know he goes by like the Maryland Mamba. So the closest thing was the Cobra. Like it's it doesn't really make a lot of sense, but it's there was nothing else that was even close to it. Sean Buchanan, I think I gave him like the dimer, I want to say, something like that. <laughs> oh, that's not a good matchup. <laughs> that's a tough ask right there. <laughs> Pretty Tennessee. There it is. Find him. There's Johnny. Oh, come on, Will. This was a lot of fun, man. I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, how to do throughout a whole season. Once I adjust the difficulty, because, like, obviously I don't want them to go undefeated, because then it's just, like, what's the point? Like, I would love to have a close game more times than not, obviously. But I'm looking forward to this, for sure. One game a night for the rest of the month, for those who haven't heard it. Same start time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time. Um, and, yeah, it'll stay the same 40-minute game, so four quarters of 10 minutes. And um, if I don't edit this video for YouTube, I'll just go ahead and I'll add this to my YouTube channel like unedited right after this for those who maybe like came in halfway and missed it or just want to rewatch it again. So yeah, give me like an hour or so. I don't know how long it'll take to render. Again, I've never done anything like this. 
But, um, yeah, it'll for sure, like, every day it'll be within 24 hours. Before the next game starts, I'll for sure have the old one up on my YouTube channel. In fact, I'm going to tweet out the link to my YouTube channel as soon as this is over. So you guys can go and subscribe. Because I'm going to have content for it throughout the season. Like, I'm hopefully year-round. Tyler is who I go by. If Tennessee and Bryce play one-on-one, -on -one, what's your prediction? That's tough. That's tough. I really think they have similar games, so I, I don't know. Is there a size advantage? I don't know who's – I feel like I feel like Bryce is a little bit taller. I don't know. I don't think I could definitively put the one guy over the other. I think if they played ten times, they're each winning like five times, honestly. Because I'd imagine they play each other pretty often, and I'm, I would guess they, they go back and forth. I know that's a cop out, but I really do think they're like evenly matched. Let me raise this camera, and then we'll do a quick look at the stats so you guys can see it before we get out of here. And now it's way too high. Yeah, I don't know. Tennessee and Bryce, feel free to sound off. Who's winning more often when you guys play each other? Tennessee, I am superior. There you go. There you have it. It's it's. There's your answer. Unless Bryce wants to <laughs> wants to debate that, I'll let y'all go at that. But I really do think they're they're about even. Uh, let's see. Quick stats. William McNair leading the team in points with 15 and 16 rebounds. Five blocks. Wow. Okay. <laughs> uh, Jabari Rice. 12 points, solid, 6 for 11 shooting. Uh, Trevlin Queen, 12 and 4. There you go. He started off really hot. Still, though, 6 for 9. Like, that's that's great shooting. An offensive rebound, that's like Trev, for sure. It's, this is exactly like Trev, actually, which is he gets the steals, he gets the blocks, the offensive rebounds. He always has a really well-rounded stat line. Uh, Evan Gillery, the second, 12 points, 2 assists, solid. Uh, Johnny McCants. Five assists. Wow. With nine and 12. That's really good. Four blocks. Okay. Uh, Clayton Henry. Nine points. Two boards. Okay. Terrell Brown. I was looking for Terrell to, Terrell to shoot more threes, man. I might have to go back tonight and readjust these like shot tendencies to make it as realistic as possible. Six for Tennessee. Let's go. And three assists. Okay. Okay, Yvonne. Yeah, I got to do something because Yvonne should be way higher. Yvonne needs to be at around 10 points. The eight boards is good. And that's really good, actually. Three blocks. Nice. Sean, five or two. Good stat line. CJ, four and seven. Wow, he got, he got busy on the glass. Okay. Four assists, too. Nice. Bryce, four points. Who got more shot attempts? Eight shot attempts. Five shot attempts. I think that might answer our question, guys. I'm, I'm just saying. It's one game. It's one game. AJ Harris, I got to fix him. I got to fix him. AJ is a dog. He, he, does, he will do way better than that. Two, three, and three. Yeah, that's my bad, AJ. Doesn't really look too much like you either. These are the faces, by the way, that y'all can see real quick. We got AJ. I'm going to give him like a, a C plus, maybe a B minus. Bryce, I give myself a flat B. CJ, the hair is different, uh, like a B minus. Sean, I give Sean like a B, a B, maybe a B plus even. Yvonne, I think that's an A. That looks like him. Tennessee, I'll give that like a B plus. I think that's pretty good. Terrell, if you let the hair down, I think it's good. I'm going to give like a B minus. Clayton, that doesn't look anything like Clayton. <laughs> I was doing some of these at like 4 o'clock in the morning, guys. You have to remember this, okay? Like, I really was not at my best mentally when I was doing I'm not even going to grade that one. I'm not even going to grade that. I'm not. Oh, okay, I'm done grading. I'm done grading. I'm done with all that. But, yeah. Oh, and then quick stats for those who care about what Miami did so y'all can go back and look at it. Just so y'all can pause it or whatever. But yeah, guys. Oh, copyright. Copyright. That is going to do it, guys, for episode one. 
the New Mexico State Aggies take their season opener with a convincing 101-64 victory over the Miami Heat. Next up tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Mountain Time is going to be a game against the Denver Nuggets. Let's just take a quick look at this matchup. A quick preview. This will be on the road. Jamal Murray, Gary Harris, Michael Porter Jr., Paul Millsap, and Nikola Jokic. That's going to be a good one. I am going to raise the difficulty rating for this right now, actually, so I don't forget. Let's make it like a 90 three for right now we'll slowly go up until we get close games but yeah that's gonna do it guys i want to say this live stream is pushing an hour and a half now so i'm gonna go ahead and call it a night thank you so much for everybody that tuned in man i want to say we topped out at like 13 14 people which is is great for the first night tons of comments i love talking to you guys so yeah please make sure to tune in tomorrow also i'm going to be tweeting out that link to my youtube channel um, literally right now, as soon as this is over, I'll tweet that out. So make sure, please go and subscribe to it because I'm going to have content, so much content that I'm so excited about it. So please go make sure to follow that as well. So thank you guys. I am out of here.